Okay. Hi and welcome to the 4 Minute Mull. Uh, there was no episode last week, uh, that's my fault. I've just been quite snowed under, mostly with rugby work, but also finishing up a project that I've been doing for Cricket South Africa, where I've been evaluating their talent pathways in school. And that was actually going to be the subject of this week's 4 Minute Mull. I was going to talk to you about talent and how you structure a system that develops that talent all the way through to professional level. But then what happened was, at the weekend, there was just this unspeakably tragic event in cycling, where a young Belgian cyclist, Michael Gulitz, died during the Paris Roubaix. And his team announced that on Sunday night uh, as the result of cardiac arrest. Now, any sudden death is going to be jarring to people, understandably. But when it happens to someone so young, he was 23, at the peak of their physical health, physical performance, and doing the sport that is supposed to make them among the top 100th of 1% of healthy human beings, that is almost incomprehensible to people. And so you can imagine, and understandably, there's just been this outpouring of grief and confusion and bewilderment. How can something like this happen to someone so young? It is, it is genuinely shocking. And it would be terrible if it weren't, by the way. Um, if it was normalized to the extent that we can just say, oh, it happens, let's move on. That would be far, far worse. And then I also received a number of questions from people, colleagues, friends, asking about how this could happen. And so this four minute mile is my contribution to the conversation that is going on. And a couple of things about that is number one is I realized that there are many sensitivities and so it would be destructive to speculate about the specific case. So I'm not going to do that. Number two, I do this very cautiously because I know that I'm not a cardiologist. I'm not even a sports physician. And so I can't speak to you with first-hand experience and share insights gained from my own experiences. I normally try to do that in these videos, not today. What I want to do is to share with you what is published in the academic literature so that it might give some insights and some data that will help elevate the conversations that are naturally happening around this latest event. And so that's the intention of this particular four-minute mull. So I guess a start point would be to ask, what are we actually dealing with here? And there's some quite good data from what I think is a very good study that was published in 2015 and which looked at 10 years worth of sudden deaths in the NCAA competition. And this is what they found. So there were 514 total student deaths, which they then break down into reasons for death. And they find that accidents are the most common, making up exactly half of all the cases. The next most common are the medical causes, and the one that's specific to our discussion is the most common medical cause for death, which was sudden cardiac death. And so over these 10 years, there were 79 such cases, which works out to a rate of 1 per 53,700 athlete years. And the way to interpret that is to imagine that there are then 53,700 athletes participating in a sport in a given year. What this is saying is that statistically, you would expect there to be one case of sudden cardiac death in that group every year. By extension, if there were, say, 5,300 athletes participating per year, you would expect one sudden cardiac death every 10 years. That risk is not the same for everyone, of course. So this is a table from a paper called Sudden Cardiac Death in Athletes, published two years ago, which summarizes the findings of that study. And it shows you that there are some groups that have much higher risk than others. So, for instance, men are much, much more likely to experience sudden cardiac death than women. Black athletes are much more likely to experience it than Hispanic and white athletes. And that there are some sports in which increased risk is found. Men's basketball, men's soccer, and men's football. And so that maybe gives some context because a number of people in the past have also asked me when there are fairly high-profile cases in soccer or football, for those of you who want to call it that, of these athletes like Fabrice Mwamba, Mark Vivian Foe, who collapsed and have cardiac events on the pitch, one of the risk factors may be that they are of West African descent because I think that you will probably find that they are overrepresented in this group of people who experiences sudden cardiac death. So I guess a couple of points on that. One is that the prevalence is quite low, you know, 1 in 50, 1 in 60,000. But not so low that we can just brush it aside as something that hardly ever happens because when it does happen, the consequences are catastrophic, just absolutely tragic, as we've seen 
this last weekend. So therefore, it needs to be addressed. But I guess the point I'm making is I, I was personally surprised to see just how many there are. And last night I went onto Wikipedia and I just had a look for randomly how many footballers have died suddenly playing football. Um, and not that I'm offering Wikipedia up as a source of trustworthy info on this topic, but I was surprised to see just how many there were. This is from 2010 alone. And so you can scroll down and you'll see a number of these guys from all over the world, all different ages. I mean, there are some here as young as 13. There are some as old as 44. And Wikipedia lists cause of death here, but I'm not sure I trust that because I think sometimes they mix up heart attack and cardiac arrest, which are different things. And I think a lot of the time it's speculative. But the point that I would make is that there are more maybe than people would have anticipated there are. The same is actually true in cycling. So this is a post from the middle of last year in which it first lists a number of riders who were either sidelined temporarily or permanently with cardiac conditions. And you can see there are a number of names, some quite high profile. And then there's a list of cyclists who've died during, uh, during cycling competitions. And so soccer is not unique. It's not obviously unique to football. I think the point is that these things do happen uh, with catastrophic consequences and therefore need to be addressed. And then the final question, or at least the final question I will ask in this video, because I think this is such a complex issue that really deserves, it's so important that it deserves more questioning to explore in depth. But the final thing I would ask is, why does it happen? In other words, what are the conditions that cause these sudden cardiac deaths to occur? Now, it's here that I go a little bit above my station, because as I said up front, I'm not a cardiologist, and I would never presume to know even a fraction of what they know. However, what we do know from the published literature is that when these sudden cardiac events and deaths occur, there was almost always some underlying condition. That person experienced some abnormality in their heart, which predisposed them to risk and then exercise acts as the trigger. So in other words, it's not necessarily that exercise causes the problem. There's another cause, but exercise triggers that cause to manifest. And one of the big challenges in this regard for clinicians is that oftentimes the first sign or symptom that there is a condition is death. Now that's obviously a problem because especially in young athletes there's often no indication that they have one of these abnormalities until the event that often causes their death and so that's a, that's a real challenge. So what are some of those conditions and for that back to the paper that I cited a little bit earlier and this table which summarizes some of those conditions for you. Now I'm not going to go into detail and list each of these and discuss them that's something those of you who are interested in can pursue further. But what this table shows you is that it's possible to divide these conditions into different quadrants. And in the top half, there's a batch of conditions that are congenital or genetic, which means that they are inherited from parents. And then in the bottom half are conditions that are, are acquired. And then you have conditions that affect the heart structure. So there's, these are structurally abnormal heart conditions on the left, and on the right are structurally normal heart conditions. And the one that I want to just emphasize in the context of screening to try and prevent these is right at the top here on the left hand side. It's hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And this is one of the common causes of death, particularly in young athletes. And the challenge with this condition is that when you do screening, it often presents in much the same way as athletes enlarged heart. And so one of the positive adaptations to training in athletes is that the heart does get larger. The muscle gets thicker and the heart increases in size. That can look quite similar to this pathological condition which increases the risk of death. And so if you are now doing a screening exercise on all athletes, you have a possibility of a false positive where you will tell an athlete who's actually healthy that they are at increased risk of cardiac death. And so that's one of the challenges with screening. The other big challenge with screening is the cost. Imagine you're responsible for 10,000 athletes, even 1,000 athletes. The, the logistical barriers and the cost barriers to doing screening on every single one of them is an issue. So those are some of the issues that the, that the experts, the people involved in this field, have to constantly grapple with. And if you've watched this video and you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, I would strongly encourage you to do a little bit of reading. And a good place to start would be to search for British Journal of Sports Medicine, so that's BJSM, Podcasts, Sudden Cardiac Death, because they've interviewed experts, real experts, who do know a lot about this stuff, and they have done an excellent job in explaining things like prevention, screening, 
diagnosis and management. So I encourage you to read up and listen up a little bit more from them. For now, I'm going to leave that and say that my intention here was not to give you a crash course in cardiology, but to basically explain to you some of the stats and some of the background into what the true risk is of these tragic events happening. I know that it would offer scant consolation to anyone out there who's been affected, whether by this latest case or whether by any sudden cardiac death in sport. That was not my intention and every single one of you has my sincere condolences. But what I hope is that the information and the context that I provided elevates the discussion and, and maybe grows awareness because I think that is also key. So that's it for what is quite a crappy uh, topic to have to address and I hope that it doesn't come up again anytime soon. Join me next time when I will hopefully talk a little bit about talent ID and the systems that need to be put into place to maximize that. So we'll chat again then. Bye.